Fiesta Bowl is underway. This is Hollowell from the three-yard line. He's got an alley. Good return to the 25-yard line. So Bobby Pesavento took over following the injury to starter Craig Oaks. And he has been Mr. Reliable. That's why he's maintained the job. And since he took over, he simply has not made the big mistake for Coach Barnett. In fact, his passing efficiency led the Big 12 this year. A senior quarterback about to take the first snap of his final game. You get in behind that awesome offensive line. They'll set down in the eye. They'll start the upperclassman Johnson on a slash to the 30 four yard line and here are the Tostito starting lineups now we mentioned Cortland Johnson in there purifying Brown they're gonna also play behind the great offensive line this is the force number 65 Andre Girard as good a guard as there is in the country an all-american this year but this entire offensive line needs to be celebrated they are missing Daniel Graham he will sit out the start of this game he was late for a team function and Pesavento completes his first pass out of bounds to Derek McCoy, number 80, working against this Oregon defense. Now, they must disrupt the force. They must just cause that offensive line some problems. Nebraska and Texas couldn't very often. Then bring them on. The three linebackers lead the Ducks in tackles. 75% of the time, Bowman 17 and Smith 6 will be on islands. They'll go man-to-man. -man. That will allow defensive coordinator Nick Aliotti to put eight or nine men in the box to try and stop the run game. But Pesavento stood tall with his first pass. They come back with the running game and nothing much doing, and they were able to disrupt at that time as Steve Smith, the corner, comes up hard for the Ducks. And Daniel Graham was back in the football game on that two tight end look for Colorado. How about Colorado, Brent? They take the ball to start the game, even though Daniel Graham, their best blocking and All-American tight end, isn't even on the field. That's how confident they are in their offense. Short suspension. Pesavento <laughs> in trouble, incomplete, and a very good defensive look by the Ducks. You could see Daryl Wright, the defensive end out of Fort Pierce, Florida. He put the pressure on. He was in on top of Pesavento. In fact, Pesavento went down on the seat of his pants early in this game, and here's a passing situation, and wouldn't the Ducks lead, love to keep Colorado in third and nine all game long? Johnson, the tailback, is an excellent receiver. Keep that in mind. It is third down. Pesavento's second pass pressure again. Battle incomplete. And that time, it was a strong defensive effort by Gary McGraw, who is starting at safety ahead of Lewis. He also is out for disciplinary reasons, but Keith Lewis, the starting free safety, normally expected to be in the game quickly. And great pressure again on Pesavento. And now Keenan Howry will attempt to give them field position here against Mark Mariscal. Has to reach down. On into the end zone, and it'll come on the 20-yard line. Joey Harrington, a homegrown hero from Portland, Oregon, and one of the finest quarterbacks in the country, known as Captain Comeback, 10 times in the fourth quarter. He's brought the Ducks from behind, 24 and 3, as a starting quarterback for Oregon. Play fake, got time, goes for the home run on first down. Out of bounds, incomplete. A look at these skill players. They'll use both of these running backs. Morris, he gets you to the outside. Smith more of a cut runner once he gets into the hole. Now, this offensive line, they don't get the notoriety of Colorado, but they allowed only 11 sacks this year. They're quick, they're athletic. We watch them in practice set up screen passes. They get outside very well. We'll see how they hold up here today. Second down. The running play behind that offensive line against this defensive front, which allowed only 3.8 yards a rush. And Morris got more than that that time. And averaging 16 tackles a game, the three linebackers, Tufts, Johnson, and Walrus are there. 
Michael Lewis. He led this team attack. The only even minor controversy we had was when Joy Harrington looked at the tape and said, I don't see a star. He meant it as a compliment that they all play well. Lewis didn't take it that way. He said, I'll see him when the game starts. And number 31 is back at safety. There is Harrington's first completion, and it is a first down to the 31-yard line. The savvy and the experience. He goes to a tight end. Reitster, they knew just what they needed. Colorado came with a blitz here and a, and a quick throw from Joey. Three-step drop, little option route on the hot from the weak side. And actually, the defender, Robinson, threw him for a first down. He can't have tackled short if he'd have brought down Webster with the first hit. You can just see the experience of Harrington as he crouches down behind center and off the blitz. He looked right back over at Parker for the incompletion. And now it's time for the clear Nicoderm game solution. Both carry. of these teams want to do the same thing, Brent. If they have the ball, they want to keep the ball. Have it, keep it. They want to stay balanced. A little more of a slant towards the pass with Oregon. More obviously run with Colorado. But neither team can stop running the ball throughout this whole game, especially Oregon. They must stay balanced and run the ball. Second down and 10. He rolls the pocket hard to the right, deflected, incomplete. And the man who deflected at that time was Joey Johnson, the Hawk linebacker, getting over. When I come out that first series, I'm, I'm finding, out, uh, finding out about myself. I'm getting settled. I'm getting comfortable in my rhythm so that I can perform for the rest of the day. Well, he moved that pocket hard to the right that time, and he throws well on the move. We watched that in practice. He'll throw back against the grain. He's very effective. Uh, a la one Joe Montana, you might remember that. And that Joe featured a lot with San Francisco. Third down and ten now. Steps to the right. Receiver's covered. Going to throw incomplete. Right, left, drop back, three steps, five steps. That's what the quarterback is required to do. You'll see if he can give the Buffaloes some field position. Arroyo is punt, not a strong one. Hollowell on the big hop. Eludes the first man. He's quick. Dives to the 35-yard line where Pesavento and the Buffaloes will put it in play when we come back. Gary Barnett does not tip his hand early. He kept his offensive package over on the sideline, and then he sends out Bobby Purify as his tailback. So number 42 comes in as tailback in this sequence. Purify cuts back to the hole and muscles his way to the 42-yard line. Now, Gary, let me ask you about the cat and mouse game. We have the defensive coordinator for Oregon upstairs, Aliotti, and Watson, the offensive coordinator for Colorado, also upstairs. Sean Watson, it has to be patient with the run game. He showed it the last two times against Nebraska and Texas. Nick Aliotta doesn't want that cutback play, that play that just purified, just ran. That's what he thinks is the key of the running game, those running backs cutting back downhill. So they have stressed all week in practice. Keep the gaps filled. Here is a delay with Purify trying to get to the corner. Can he get it? He cannot. He is stopped by Wesley Mallard. You talk about a great name for a duck. How about Mallard, number 18, a senior walk-on from Columbus, Georgia, and one of the ringleaders of the defense. Now Johnson checks back in. He's the best receiver of the Colorado tailbacks. Hollowell turns around in his motion. And Pesavento looks short to Graham. He's got it for the first down at the 46-yard line. Purify checks back in at that deep tailback spot. Play fake. Pesavento buying some time. And beautiful coverage that time by Keith Lewis. He did not stay on the sideline long either. So both Graham and Lewis uh, penalized from being late. Boot Lake pass coming around. You can see Lewis right there. He's almost beating him to his spot. When you've got four weeks to get ready for a game, Nick Eliotto says, I know what you guys are doing. I don't know if we can stop you, but we know what you're doing. And Lewis was ready. Aliotti, once an assistant coach with the St. Louis Rams, then went to UCLA and moved up to work with his closest friend, Coach Pilati, and is now the defensive coordinator. 
hands off and purify for maybe a yard. This will be third and long. All-American Andre Girard right here. That's the mismatch. That guy is basically an NFL player just getting a pancake block. But those linebackers are meeting it downhill. They're forcing that running back to dodge, move. They're not getting at full speed like we've seen the last couple games for Colorado. And Johnson continue to substitute. Third down for Pesavento. He's blitzed. They wanted Johnson a great catch on the screen. Johnson breaks free. One man to go, and he trips. He could have cut toward the sideline and hoped that the interference would knock out that last man, but instead he cut back. What a play by Pesavento. The middle linebacker is going to drop out, and his splits is coming from the backside. It's actually a zone blitz. Watch Pesavento get rid of this ball at the last second, throw it to his spot, and you're right, Brent. I thought it was touchdown. I thought you were going to go touchdown like you usually do, but he cut back the wrong way. First down inside the red zone for the first time. Here's Chris Brown on the field, his first carry. Here is the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. With a couple of teams, well, the winner is going to come out of here with bragging rights and pulls hard from the breast. Here's Brown on a cutback. He muscles his way inside the 10, and there's the strength of this running game before Smith can bring him down. That's Gerard again. This is the play. Down, down, 65, kick out. Watch this one again. Basic play, one of about four or five plays, boom. And Drum does a great job also, the fullback. You follow Drum, you follow number 65, I think you'll see an offense. It's almost a mismatch for any college football team. First down and goal inside the 10-yard line. Brown battling for the end zone is stopped at the three-yard line, and we check in with Jack Arroyo. So now, Brent, we've seen all three of the running backs of the Colorado Buffaloes in all three of their four days. As you said, Cortland Johnson, the best in passing situations. And then, of course, Bobby Purify out in the wide open territory. And I asked Sean Watson, well, what about Chris Brown? He says, you'll see him in the red zone. He's the toughest when we need to make the most important yards. Brown, the Northwestern transfer from Naperville, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. Buffaloes in that power to the one-yard line, and it will be third and goal with Lewis. Free safety. Can anybody stop him on third and goal? Touchdown, the fullback, number 33, Brandon Drum, the junior from Anchorage, Alaska, powers into the end zone for the first score of the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, and the Buffaloes jump ahead. Has replaced Jeremy Flores as the kicker. Flores is also being penalized and he did not start this game like graham so brome adds the extra point. here's the kickoff now by colorado it'll be fielded back near the goal by alan amundsen and he's whacked at the 20-yard line amundsen's the fastest player fastest of all the tailbacks for oregon but you can see the colorado strength so far is the difference so joy harrington number three Brings the offense out, and Ontario Smith, the transfer from Tennessee, checks in as his running back. You'll get the first call. Cuts back in that hole, slashes. To about the 23-yard line, Justin Bannon makes the stop. Such a well-organized ball game. Second down now for Harrington. Short drop, fire slant, caught, first down. Parker breaks free, he's the fastest man. Colorado's got to close. They do, but he crosses midfield that time. John Tuck corner that time, just a simple slant pass. Watch the corner technique here. When you take a bad angle, I think it's Sneed. Look at that bad angle right there. That is a short play that turns into a big play. And boy, oh boy, Colorado lucky she doesn't take it to the house with that speed. They say he's got a fine, fine future in the 47. Watch play it. And back to work goes Harry that incomplete. And he overshoots his running back that time, Ontario Smith. Take a look at what these two teams want to do if they have their way calling plays. There's three tailbacks, right, that we've seen. They want to run power, power, power with those three tailbacks, Colorado, and then mix in a little bit of the pass. Oregon, when they run the ball, do it a little differently, a little bit of a finesse running game, and that sets up the pocket and play action game like the matchup he had right there. He just overthrew the ball. The game, I happen to watch. Young Allen during the pregame warm-up, freshman from Torrance, California. He made some nifty catches. I'm sure the coaches observed that. Second down now. Harrington straight back. Fires complete. 
first down to the 25-yard line, and there's Jason Willis, the junior from Los Angeles. Read this time from Joey Harrington. Colorado goes with a zone look. look. Watch to the inside. Drop back for Joey. He's got his eyes on the left side. A push off from the corner. Let's the linebacker clear and delivers it just as the receiver comes into the open territory. You want to get those receivers as they enter the hole, not after they're already in the hole, and Joey does it so well. Last time he was on this field. Joey Harrington threw for six touchdowns against Arizona State. He's now at the 25-yard line. Looking against Colorado, has good time, and dumps it off, and it is dropped at the 20-yard line by Willis. And uh, Jack Aru, we had a couple players shaken up there. Brett, you know how important it is that this offensive line stay healthy for the Colorado Buffaloes. First, it was Andre Girard came off. They thought he had a knee problem. It was just a faulty brace. Once he got rid of that, he was fine. Then Justin Bates, they had to check his knee as well. He is okay. They're not going to keep either of these players out of this game. They're both, according to the trainers, perfectly all right. I was already the L fumble until you reached back there. Good <laughs> grab, Jack. It takes a microphone to talk to us. Okay. Second down and ten. Smith is tripped up on a beautiful play by Moore. And Lewis was coming off the slot on one side, and it looked like Oregon had the right play call going the opposite way. Watch Lewis come right here this way, and the run is the opposite way. So the play call was right, but Moore comes right in there and just takes on the blocker and some reads the runner. Wonderful play. He's a good one. This is third down now for the Ducks. Joey fires. Got it. Touchdown. Keenan Howard. The junior wide receiver who makes one big play after another. Let the fireworks begin. What a wonderful pass route. A little shake to the outside. Watch him come down on Lewis. Shake to the outside and then cut right upfield. Lewis, a safe bites on the out route. And look at that throw, Brent. It's like handing the ball off on third and 13. Sigal ties it up. And look what's happening. Aure, a big play receiver for Joey Harrington. He had plenty of time. No pressure. That beautiful pattern. Gets in deep on Robinson. Touchdown. Well, this was the scene Friday night at the Festival Luau at Makato's Island. Coaches and players from both teams got together for some food games. And uh, at the gaming table, um, Joey Harrington turned it over. <laughs> oh, my. But he didn't turn it over just a couple of moments ago, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, here he is, Joey Harrington. You know, not everyone gets the gaze in his own likeness 100 feet high on a Manhattan skyscraper, but Joey Harrington certainly did. He went out incognito to look at that sign in New York, which was paid for by boosters, cost him some $250,000. And a walker uh, on a Manhattan street recognized him, and he said, that's you on the side of the building. Joey said, yes, it is. The guy said, cool, and walked away. A typical New Yorker. Here's the kickoff now with our Tostitos Fiesta Bowl tied at seven. Here's Hollowell. Hollowell to the 29-yard line. Let's check in with Jack Aru. Jack? Brennan, 5'10", 212 pounds. This man, Keenan Howery, admits that he has average-sized hands. But he has said that my success is not according to my hands. He says that it's in his eyes. He says it's all about focusing the ball, looking at it all the way until it goes into his hands. Now, if you do that, Gary, you've got to have a pretty good target to throw at if you're Joey Harrington. Yeah, and, and if you got a guy that can throw it to you like that, too, you can watch it go right into your hands, too. Play fake. Pass the vento. And McCoy is interfered with two penalty flags are thrown Pass interference on the defense 15 yards from the previous spot automatic first down watch McCoy come down about 10 yards hitch look back and go and if he's not grabbed a good play by the senior Bowman because that would have been six points now on first down they'll come back with purify he cuts back and Oregon they stayed right in those slots. Garrett Graham makes the stop. We're at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. Fake Pesavento waiting, going deep down the middle, and uh, battle for it. 
incomplete at the five-yard line. Double post. Inside receiver goes post. Outside receiver Cormier goes post right behind him. And Pesavento was a little late throwing that ball and threw it way too high. It was a pop-up. Everybody had a chance for this one. Good defense by Smith, though, keeping his hand in there and not getting another pass interference like his partner did the play before. This time they're going to run. Nothing doing. The Ducks were ready. Slips the first man, but not the second and third. Down at the 15-yard line. So in all likelihood, Brock Berlin will start. And what a story that is, because everybody says in Florida that Brock Berlin is going to transfer to Miami. But he gets a start, apparently, for the Gators. There is that flanker screen trying to stun Colorado on that far side of the field. Second down and four for the Ducks. Slipped on the cutback, and this will be third and a couple. Morris, the ball carrier that time for the Ducks. Gary Barnett. And Colorado with the record showing that they improve more than any team in college football this year. Only three down linemen this time for the Buffaloes. Joey has time and has to throw it away as his receivers were well covered, and the Ducks now are forced to punt. It's that three-down lineman pack successfully used against Texas and Chris Sims. Three men rushing, but still able to get a little pressure on Joey Harrington as he lets his ball go. Well, he's very fortunate that that wasn't called roughing the quarterback by breaking this there. He comes up and warns him and says, you do that again, I'm going to call the flag on him. Royale. for daylight Hello, and he's into Oregon territory he's lined up behind drum the hand to Chris Brown muscles his way yep. across the 40 yard line and this is what Colorado wants to be sitting in second and short and now they can go to work uh, Oregon's give them a lot of eight and sometimes nine man fronts I, I think they're trying to open the game up a little bit I'm not surprised they've gone back to Chris Brown though they want to establish that inside run game yeah and Brown is averaging Five yards a carry as we open the second quarter. And number 22, the big man, against both the Cornhuskers and the Longhorns on that cutback. And again, Ali Odi and the Oregon coaches alerted their defenders all week long. Stay in your gaps. Don't leave them because on the cutback, you could make the stop as David Moretti, the middle linebacker from Pleasanton, California, did that time. Brent, I was out to practice the day before yesterday, which is usually a light practice. No real pads except for shoulder pads. They don't wear their, their pants and their thigh boards. They were practicing tackling on the day before a game. Well, here is third and short behind that talented offensive line, and I don't believe he got it. Kevin Mitchell and Olshansky stuff the play. Watch this. Inside, too. Watch that off defensive tackle, Zach Frater, right there. Number 54. That pushes it, and those linebackers are standing right there. Great team defense. Now, I think Bellotti was alerting them to watch the fake. They are inside the Oregon 40-yard line, and you, you never know what Coach Barnett is going to come up with. Delay of the game. Five-yard penalty. They're going to bring it back now for Mariscal, and he's going to attempt to drop this one down inside the 20-yard line. And here are our two outstanding punt returners. Aurey's back there. You can see what he averaged. And Hollowell, of course, led the NCAA this year with an average of 18 yards of return. But Howry, who caught a touchdown pass thrown by Harrington earlier in this game, he's, uh, he's every bit as dangerous back there deep. He's standing on the 10-yard line. High punt by Mariscal. Fair catch is the signal inside the 20. Good punt. So there's a penalty flag late. Was there contact made? Uh, the field judge came over. Right to the right of the punter catching it right here. Watch this. Well, that's easy. It's an easy call. He's within two yards. Be first down, team. The Oregon Ducks coming out from their own 20. Play fake. Harrington goes hard right down the field for the home runs. Got Parker. He's in a foot race. They won't catch him. Touchdown. 
touchdown ducks an 80 yarder oh the home run ball you can't beat it you cannot throw a ball any better than that he hit Parker right on the dead run like a baton race in track. That's how nice that ball was thrown. Siegel, the freshman from Sacramento. And the speedster Parker is causing them a lot of trouble. He has now caught three passes for 117 yards. Play action pass in the small screen right there. That's Joey Harrington, a little bootleg action. Now watch Parker runs right by Strickland. Look at this ball thrown. Like a baton handoff, wasn't it? Wasn't that beautiful? Beautiful. I thought both of his touchdown passes Perfect. were right on the money. And Parker runs a nice route. Comes out 12 yards, little shake to the outside. There's no free safety. And he just tracks this ball perfectly into his hands. Not going to catch him, Strickland. Oh, I'll tell you, Joey Harrington He's a good jazz pianist. He's playing a merry tune right now, folks. He is at the top of his game. Sammy Parker, the fastest. The wideouts gets free. Both of these teams average over 30 points a game. But I think the main story right now has been the performance of the Oregon defense in filling those gaps. It'll be Sorrell coming out. Short of the 20-yard line. We mentioned that Harrington was an accomplished jazz pianist. Give a listen, folks. Defense jumps in. We got a penalty flag down on the uh, on the game. But you know when you talk to you talk to Joy Harrington about his piano playing ability, I'll tell you why it's unusual, folks. Because most talented athletes <laughs> they go out and practice ball. They don't practice the piano. But he said it was all mom. She made me stick in there in the house every afternoon, and uh, he's happy for it now. Believe me. He spent his time wisely on the on the field too, learning how to throw. This guy is a talented thrower, and he's learned how to manage the game as a quarterback. So the clock mismanagement by Colorado, and now Johnson, and he's got daylight. Stopping the run pretty well because the depth of the linebackers are staying back a little deeper than we saw against Texas or Nebraska, and they're hitting that ball. In practice, they were coached over and over again to shuffle, 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 don't overrun, and then run to the ball. They're trying to stop the comeback, cutback play, and then go make the tackle. They're going to throw out of it. And they waste it down. And let's check in with Jack Aru. Jack? And Brent, I am honored to be surrounded by these young men from Tower Ladder Company 13 in New York City. Joe Graziano has been elected the spokesman. What do you think of this game so far, Joe? It's a great game. It's, uh, it's really nice to be here. We're having a great time. I'd like to thank the people of Arizona and uh, the Fiesta Bowl. And I think the only thing that makes it kind of a somber and sad day, Brent, is some of their fallen brethren. We'll get a chance to see that game today. Yes, indeed, Jack. And uh, now they, I believe Oregon stopped them again. I, I cannot believe what they're doing in these short yardage situations. And because they were struggling, Gary, that's why I was surprised that the Buffaloes went pass on second down because they're having some problems. And now that they failed again, they're going to have to punt Olshansky along with Mallard makes the stop for the Ducks. I think they were so confident they could pick up that first down on the third down that they said, let's try to get a big one. Didn't work. But they keep it clean. Another good punt. They give him two yards that time and then close in around the 22-yard line forward progress. You don't want to uh, overstate the case for a series being important in the first half of a football game. 
But folks, Colorado's defense has to be a little uneasy right now. Harrington's getting the speed man. Number one, Parker loose. He's throwing the ball right on the money. He's in that comfort zone, that zone you don't want a quarterback to settle in if you're Colorado. Now Morris is his running back. Short drop, fires complete, and I'm telling you right now, folks, Harrington feels that he can complete any pass he wants right now, Gary. 18 plays so far in the football game. 14 of them have been pass plays. You got a fifth-year senior quarterback who's hot, three-step drops. It's almost impossible for Colorado to get to this guy. He throws it too quickly, and with the half rolls and play-action passes, very tough to get to him. They're going to have to cover people. Second down and six, and you cannot overemphasize as Joey changes it at the line. Colorado switches back out, so they will run Morris. But just take a listen to Coach Mike Bellotti. There's a tremendous amount of exchange of information. You know, he wants to know why, and we're always doing things about, you know, who we're keying, why we're checking certain things, and he's very, he could be a coach easily. He could walk right in and coach right now, and that's what our quarterbacks generally do, but Joey is, is probably special in that regard. You know, they say David Carr of Fresno State will be the first quarterback drafted in the NFL draft, but folks, you're looking at the second, and who knows? Who knows who's going to wind up? This is a very impressive performance so far. Third down now. There's that short snap drop. First down, Parker again, reaching toward the 40-yard line. You talked about the many nicknames that this man, Joey Harrington, has from Joe Heisman to Joe College. But it was at this game, right here on this field, against Arizona State, that Joey Harrington got one name, Captain Comeback. Bring his team back into a double overtime victory by one point over Arizona State. But his teammates say... But the private nickname from that game, the General. Yeah, double overtime, beating the Sun Devils. And they run, but it is well cut off that time. Morris without much room to run in as we take a look at our quarterback comparison here. Well, Gary. Bobby Pesavento needs the running game to come through. They do not have the firepower at wide receiver, nor does Bobby have the experience that Joey Harrington has. Harrington's on fire. He feels the game. The only thing going well for Colorado defensively is they're stopping the run. At least they're keeping them one-dimensional. What if that comes back and haunts them? That's their problem. But what a dimension. You bet. Harrington's already thrown for 183 yards in this game. He's looking more, and he's got more. And tackle is missed. First down across midfield that time. Lawrence Wood, nickelback comes in. Just a quick hitch, trying to pick up half the yards. Second long, they go for a quick hitch. They get a first down. Four tackling. Often happens in bowl games. They haven't played in four weeks. Right now, the defensive backs for Colorado are intimidated by the quickness of the release for Joey Harrington and the speed of Parker. He is standing there in a comfort zone. He does it again. He's got all day. And that was thrown to the backside yeah. of Parker. The Oregon fans wanted interference, but he had cut the post, and it was thrown to the other side. Strickland, a cover man on the backside. But, folks, Harrington's just standing up. His uniform is still ivory white. Well, when you see Parker run this post, Harrington's not quite sure what's in front of Parker. He doesn't know if there's another safety there, so he plays it safe and keeps it down the hash mark. Parker takes it in a different angle, and that was a good no call. The quickness of his release and his feet, you can tell how well he scored. Second down and 10. Slips the tackle. First down, out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Sean Tufts getting the running back out of this. Who is Oregon's all-time leading tackler? I know some of you Duck fans up there in the Northwest, you know the answer to that one. Some of the other folks don't. First down at 10, he was a good one. Went on the NFL. They empty the backfield out. That's how well this offensive line is doing. Then they throw Smith the screen pass, and uh, not much doing there. It'll be second down and 10. So he is 10 of 18 for 198 yards and two touchdowns. That was the first one. Officially, 79 yards to Parker on this one. 
That ties the record here at the Fiesta Bowl. The Ducks again, and if you're calling plays for Oregon, you just say, let's keep putting it up. Just dial one. He's hot. Second down. They'll run the draw play again. Not much doing there. And uh, Smith is swallowed up. Surprisingly, that they called the run play. Flew Ellen doing a good job. Third down and 11. Here's Peel right here. Still hasn't gotten the ball. Joey looking in zone. Parker again deflected and out of bounds. Boy, Parker made that grab too, but he was out of bounds. This was very close. Ball was tipped. I thought he threw it in the coverage. A little tricky on this end zone right here. Two different covers. I think that was a good call. He did not have the ball until his right foot came. Has not punted once in his college career. High snap. He punted in high school, left-footed, <laughs> and it's out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. Joey, you made me look bad. I said you could punt. So now, really messed this thing up for him. It was a high snap. Yep. Breaks it down. Well, they said he had a good left hand when he played the <laughs> piano, too. <laughs> Oregon leads in time. So Bobby Pesavento. Under center here. Down a touchdown. They'll throw on first down. Wide open to his big All-American tight end, the winner of the Mackey Award, and Daniel Graham for 11 yards. Now, we ask you the Aflac trivia question. Who is Oregon's all-time leading tackler? And as you look at Daniel, here's the reason why. It was his father, <laughs> Tom Graham, the all-time leading tackler up at Oregon. And of course, playing for the Denver Broncos, Daniel raised in that area, and he decided to go up the road to Boulder and Daniel Graham, the winner of the Mackey Award this year, as the best tight end in the country. And he just picked up a first down for the Buffaloes. Play fake, Pesavento rolling hard. Tosses, incomplete. Well, the second major story of this game, besides Joey Harrington throwing the ball so accurately and quickly, has been the run stop from that Oregon defense. You know, Brent, coming into this game, they're only giving up 121 yards a game rushing, second best in the Pac-10. Their speed up front and those linebackers they're dropping, they're standing very deep and they're hitting it more down Much hill. better system against this power. Second and ten and Brown is the running back. Picked up a couple of yards and it will be third and long again. And now it's time for our AT&T game summary. So well, you could see the rush yards, and yeah. what a difference, but that's not the story of the game. Well, I said balance was key, but balance and only getting 59 rush yards for Colorado was not expected. What has distorted this game has been the passing and how hot Harrington is. Someone down, I think it is Gerard. Is it Gerard? It Dunn? is Gerard oh, who my. is down. Oh, my. Looks like he's favoring that right side, either his knee or his ankle, as he comes off the field right On the 32-yard line, Graham. To the right side of the formation. Pesaveno steps up in the pocket, goes McCoy, intercepted by Smith. 45, cut toward midfield. Breaks free and he is down in Colorado territory at the 48 yard line. Steve Smith, the senior from Rancho Palos Verdes. Of his comfort zone. He's used to that running game going. He's used to third and short. He tries to go back, nothing there, and then tries to make a big play. He's been avoiding trying to force things because that running game was working so well. Today, it's not. 14 7, the Ducks lead, and they got a short field when we come back. Threw him down late. Hasn't been close to being sacked yet. And whacked only a couple of times. So now, first and ten, and a pitch man is wide open. Smith crosses the 45-yard line with Johnson making the... One uh, of the reasons stop. Oregon has given up less sacks than anyone in the Pac-10 the last three years is because of the diversity of their pass offense. Three-step, five-step, an offensive line that believes in the quarterback and a system that keeps you off the passes. Adams, Schmidt, Weaver, Forrester, Chambers. They're the big fellas up front, and they're doing the job right now for Harrington, who's thrown for almost 200 yards. Defense must have a stop. 427. Time to Parker. 
first down. Had him right on the first down marker. And uh, what's the situation with Gerard, Jack? Well, Brent, believe it or not, Andre had his kneecap pop out. They popped it back in. They retaped his knee. And he is ready to go back in. That's one tough offensive line. First down and 10 for Harrington and the Ducks. At the Colorado 36-yard line. Play fake. Sprint right. Got time. Goes outside. Alry incomplete. Come back with the running play. And Smith to the 21-yard line. A first down. So just as Colorado starts to look past, the Ducks decide, let's come back with a run, and that was for 15 yards. A little yards. bit of their own medicine here. Counter play to the backside. Counter Trey Ontario Smith runs with passion. This is what scouting report on this guy. Perimeter guy, great lateral movement. It can make people miss. You saw it all right there. Here's Harrington again. He's going to throw back to the tight end. So for the first time today, Peel catches the ball and a first down at the 10-yard line. And uh, Tom McMahon, the other defensive coordinator for the Buffaloes, he is upstairs. Here's a young man who has battled and overcome cancer. Vision 1 AA has a tournament. The handoff now to Smith. Smith cuts down at the 6-yard line. Second down. To point it out, there's another secondary guy making a tackle on the run game. So off balance is Colorado with this quick passing game. A little bit of different roll right, roll left, but look at how Harrington is attacking the field. He's throwing everywhere. Every box is filled deep. I love that they're throwing deep. That loosens them up, puts a scare, but look at those quick passes and how well he's distributing the ball around the field. This is second down. Peel is flexed off the line to the left. There's that shovel pass. Touchdown, Oregon. Walking in is the running back, Ontario Smith, who transferred to Eugene from Tennessee. So the interception thrown by Pesavento results in Oregon's third touchdown of the first half. We've seen this a lot in college football. Spread out real wide and do the little shovel pass. One to Jeff Tedford, offensive coordinator. Well designed. He knew he was coming to it in, once he got inside the 10-yard line. Jeff Tedford's last game at Oregon. He'll go to California as their oh. next head coach. Jared Siegel adds the extra point. But it was this interception. And this is why they put the corners on an island at Oregon. They are able to get the job done. Watch number six against McCoy, underthrown a bit, makes the pick. Oregon working with a short field, the shovel pass. And after the defender had committed, Smith walked into the end zone. The Ducks are up by 14. Timeout. Go, boss. Well, this tailgate party at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, brought to you by Tostitos in the happiest of New Year's. Go out to our servicemen and women at our bases in this country and also overseas as we begin the new year and wish them all nothing but the best. Here it is, Oregon leading Colorado, 21 to 7. And I guess we have answered the question, can you maintain that level that Colorado showed us against Nebraska and Texas? With almost a month off, it is so hard to stay at that peak level. Kickoff is fielded at the six by Sorrell. Sorrell cuts back, battles his way to the 25. You must be very careful here. They're not put together to run a two-minute drill. Remember, backup quarterback Bobby Pesavano is not the starter at the beginning of the year. Craig Oates was. This is not his game. Wants to set the screen, which he does to Cortland Johnson, and this is a good call. Yes. Out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Let the rush close in. That's the second time that these two have hooked up on a good-looking screen play. This is Hollowell in motion behind him. He'll wind up as a slot man to the left. Pesavino has time, and it's dropped by Graham. Sort of thrown a little bit behind him, but still, I think the big fella probably feels that he should have made that catch at midfield. Tight end over the middle of the field. 
Oregon at all times knows where this playmaker is. You have a linebacker on him. You have the safety on him right there, Webster. When I watched practice, they did not, Brent, make one mental mistake when they were going against all the different formations at Colorado shows. This team was very focused on defense, ready to handle the different formations from Colorado. Second down and 10. Time to throw and misfires. And Graham was double covered. For Graham, I'll tell you, he's right here, left side, coming across. You're gonna cross somebody across the other way this time. Slat, they're trying to get the ball to Daniel Graham, but you can see, pretty crowded, nowhere to really throw the ball. Safety right there in the middle, just hoping Pezzavento will throw him the ball. He had to throw high. Lucky, lucky he got away with that one. McCoy is down to the right. Third down. And now it is fourth down, and Colorado will have to punt it away, and they're going to give Harrington one last crack. Returnable. But it was not to be as the cover man Moore, number seven, came off the block well. Gary? Well, give credit to the offensive line, but also to the game plan. Different types of drops, different types of passes, a three-step, a half roll, a throwback, and then when you get inside, a little trickery right here, the shovel pass. Colorado doesn't know if they're coming or going right now. They've got a hot quarterback delivering the ball. They continue to shuttle their two running backs. And prior to the snap, play was stopped. And we have not had no. many penalties in this game. Three against Colorado and only uh, one against the Ducks. And, of course, this one will go against them. Eastern Conference Before the crew. ball was snapped, movement by the offensive line. Five yards, still first down. Rutgers has been tied here today. Draw play. Morris made the most of it, didn't he? Out to the 29-yard line. You've really got to like the way Oregon has played here in the first half. Very well coached. They have followed their game plan to the letter. And Bellotti, who has become the most successful program coach in the Pac-10 over the last decade, putting the show on the road. The facilities have been upgraded up in Eugene. And they trade off the tradition that Graham and Dan Fouts and all the rest of those great players started up there, and now they're winning games. Here's a handoff to the 30-yard line, and that was Morris again, stopped by Michael Lewis. I think they're going to force them to take a timeout and have to punt the ball if they don't pick it up. Hey, Brent, I want to take you to page 36 of the Oregon Football Guide. You want to meet Joey Harrington? Well, inside, they tell you all sorts of things that you don't know about him. Do you know that he can't live without his feather bed? Or maybe that his favorite actor and actress are De Niro and Sandra Bullock. And the most important one when traveling, one thing he has to have, just like me, but when he said one thing people don't know, I'm a dork. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll take that dork on my team any day. You got that right. That's mom. Uh, I, I, of course, wanted to go play ball with the guys out in the street. Or up, you know, we lived a, a half a block away from a, a big playground. But, you know, mom said, you know, just play 15 minutes. You know, get 15 minutes of practice in before you go play. And, and it's paid off. Bill Evans was one of his favorite all-time piano players. And, of course, he spent some time, Evans did, with Miles Davis, Cannonball Adderley. Well, some great sounds came out of that piano, and uh, Arrington's got a great act to follow. Third down now for the Oregon quarterback. Howery's the motion receiver. Roll hard to the right on the pocket. Points. Fires underneath. First down, Parker. I mean, this quarterback is on fire, ladies and gentlemen. He's as accurate and as confident as any college quarterback I've seen in a long time. And this time, he had a tremendous amount of time to throw the ball. The half rolls are really working. Look at all that time. And he moves both of his feet together as he shuffles up in the pocket. Perfect technique. 45 seconds left here in the half. Harrington comes back to the left. And wide open Jason Willis that time. So Harrington has thrown for 230 three yards three touchdowns in this game Joey Harrington is the story of the first half he certainly has been the most valuable offensive player here at Sun Devil Stadium on a beautiful New Year's afternoon the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl of course the winner hopes that Nebraska can win the granddaddy Thursday night between the Nebraska will be taking on favored Miami in that game 
you know everybody had a say as to who was the number two team and of course uh, the humans opted for for Oregon and the computers went for Nebraska and uh, so when we were up in Nevada I dropped by a couple of the odds makers and I said who would be number two in your power ratings I'm kind of curious would Miami be favored over everybody they said yes they would but I said well what would be the shortest spread and they said Florida they said we would make Miami only a four point favorite over the Gators so the last 29 games you can see the three most effective programs in the top two will be meeting but look who is number three you would never think <laughs> <laughs> and why not smart is going to come into some money pretty soon you know interestingly for Joey Harrington in Oregon three out of the last four games he passed for less than 200 yards. Go, 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 go. He's got over 239. He's at 239 in the first half. He loves to throw on this field, doesn't he? Yep. Got time again. Oh, he throws his first pick to the 30-yard line. He overthrew his receiver. Robinson picks it off. And that will give the Buffaloes, if nothing else, a lift going into the locker room. They've still got 25 seconds, but they can certainly build off of that. And this is his first pick at 141 passes, his personal long streak, as he just led the receiver too much, threw it right to the safety. Joey got a little greedy that time, but it wasn't as much as a disaster if it happened on his own 20 yard line. And guess who made this time? Number three got over there and overthrew his intended target. That's the first time he has really, I mean, really misfired in this game. First down now from Pesavento. 25 seconds to go. Short drop, throw slant, incomplete. Second down and 10. Pesavento steps away and throws it incomplete. One time he's in coverage. Here he comes. Watch him come right in and force Pesavento to throw a bad ball. Comes in, middle linebacker, comes on a stunt. Nobody takes him and forces Bobby up in the pocket and throw an Aaron pass. Mitchell on pass coverage. Mitchell on the run. Four receivers off the line. He sets that screen pass again. Cut back by Johnson. 40, penalty flag. It's to the 27. Get those offensive linemen, and this is going to go long as they run the screen out this way. Out in space, they usually grab someone. It's usually one of those holdings or pushes, shoving the back. I mean, you can see a grab it's right there. That's what was called. It was on Gerard, number 65, coming out. Holding, back. Holding. Against the offense during the run. 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Colorado has called her second time out. We've talked a lot about the Colorado Buffalo's offensive line. They were a lot heavier and a lot more body fat when they first showed up. But Sean Watson decided to put them all on a diet with different strength and conditioning. And now the, Carol the Colorado line, just 304 pounds. One of the lightest in the Big 12. You know, when somebody says just 304 to me, Jack, I always, I always say, oh, oh, really? 21-7. Back of the gun. Pesavento. Going to take one last crack. Drop it off to McCoy underneath as the seconds run out on the first half. And Oregon will take a 21-7 lead on into the locker room. And Harrington rallying the fans. Joey Harrington stakes Oregon to a 21-7 lead, throwing for 238 yards in the first half. Parker, six catches, 145 yards, 79 of them right here for a touchdown, Oregon, and the Ducks are up by two touchdowns. And Gary Daniels, I've got to ask you, why can't Colorado convert third and short? Why can't they run the ball? I think the quickness of this defensive line for Oregon Ducks are giving them some problems. I think the game plan of putting the safeties up there, the linebackers backed off a little bit, and the ability to have two corners that can go man to man is something teams haven't been able to do against them. And they have been very successful here in the first half of this game. So coming up now, Harrington and the Ducks will possess it to start the second half. Remember, Colorado, in a little show of arrogance, won the toss and didn't defer. They said, we want the football. Here is Smith from the 10. 20. Still in bounds. Penalty flag. There is a penalty flag. What do you do to reestablish a running game? Well, we got to quit doing some of the things we're doing. And third and shorts, you know, we, we, we kill two drives on third and ones. And uh, 
you know, it's hard to get creative and do what you're doing if you can't possess the football down there a little bit, and we're not throwing the ball very well. We just got to get back into our game a little bit. We got to win by 15 points. We won't do it playing that way. Thanks, Coach. All right. Between them, they have been ever bit as successful as the Colorado running backs. They open with Morris. The commitment to the run that Bellotti talked about at the end of the first half. Well, one of the things, the reasons Colorado has had trouble getting to Joey Harrington is because he throws the ball from different spots. Launch there, launch this way two times, and in the pocket 13 times. Because he moves around, and we showed how he throws the ball all over the field, Colorado doesn't feel confident to come after him with that blitz. I think they're going to have to, though. They're going to have to move up their corners, play bump and run, and put pressure on them no matter what. Look at that jersey. On second down, that short drop. Fire it out to the left-hand side, put it in Parker's hands for another first down. Lewis, number 31, over on the stop at 25. Well, you can see it's 61 yards. And in fact, at this point in the game right now, Oregon has rushed for more yards than Colorado. I never would have believed that. Harrington has been dynamic, moving the ball around to different players. I think it's been a brilliant game plan, both offensively and defensively. And those ducks, they may quack, but they're not cracking. First down and 10 on the 25. There's that short drop deflected oh. incomplete. Oh. Corner blitz this time from the outside, coming right off here to the outside. Now watch this. Tips the ball, and Robbie Robinson, number nine, almost could have got it, either him or Johnson. And that's the big turnover that Nebraska and Texas gave to Colorado that Oregon isn't. Second down and 10 for Harrington and the Ducks. Fires to Aury. Aury short of the 30-yard line, and Lewis among those arriving already here in the second half. We see more black shirts around the ball carrier on the tackle than we saw most of the first half. More aggressive on defense. Vince Okru has decided that he needs to get after Harrington no matter what. Move your corners off. You can't play off 10 yards and blitz them. Harrington will pick you apart. Space here. Waits for the clear. Got it. It's Peel first down. A beautiful pump fake by Joy. Peel clears, and they cross midfield with a 21-yard gain. Another one of those finesse pass plays that's part of this Oregon defense. You're going to see Joey just let him go right here. Coming back in the pocket, he's going to fake the quick screen to a wide receiver and then go to the tight end down the sideline. Well conceived and completely cast this Colorado defense off balance. To daylight is Moore's got the corner on the defensive back. Still on his feet to the 21 yard line. Was he stopped? Morris. Touchdown. They couldn't bring him down. Morris, not to be denied, went 49 yards for the score. Coming right at you. Morris takes it. Bad angle to the outside here. First by Sneed, and then a bad tackle. They think he's down. Two guys in the back give up on it. Spins off, goes over the top, puts his hand down instead of his knee, and sprints into the end zone. Now for the extra point. Oregon puts a stranglehold on the Tostitas Fiesta Bowl on the first series of the second half. Morris dashes in, it's 28-7. A statement being made by the Pac-10 champions, who satisfied the human voters, but not the computers. And now the Ducks have opened up a 28-7 lead, opening drive of the half. It took them only six plays to go 88 yards. Morris bolting 49 yards for the touchdown. In case you're wondering on the rule, he rolled over a player who was down. Knee never touched the ground, so he was not down. And that's why the run was allowed. High kickoff, going to be fielded at about the six-yard line by Hollowell. Hollowell spins and 
brings it out to the 28-yard line. Take another look at this now, and you will see that as he comes across the prone player, knees don't touch the ground, so it's going to be a legal 49-yard run here by Morris. Right Joey there. Johnson. Look at that. Over the top of Johnson. Knees don't go down, so it is legal, and he dashes the rest of the way. The heat is on Pesavento and the Buffaloes. And again, that Oregon defense stops the run. Johnson, the ball carries. Time lining up strong, Gerard and Rodgers have pulled to the weak side of the formation. Three plays, one yard. Been stuffed every time they've tried to come away from their strength and pull their big guys. Oregon has been right in the backfield. Somewhat surprised that Colorado doesn't stay outside sometimes. Pesavento, incomplete. And a penalty flag is thrown on the play, and it goes against Bowman. Against the defense, 15 yards on the previous spot, automatic bonus down. Let's take a look and see if he sticks his arm out just as he starts. Yes, he gets leverage on the play by taking his right arm and placing it on the receiver's left arm. That's a good call. Yeah. Bellotti unhappy with the call from the sideline, obviously. Bowman, a home game, needed 36 tickets. He grew up in this area. We had a chance to ask Rashad about uh, coming home to play his final college game. Here's what he said. Coming home is the best thing going, you know. That's probably one of the reasons I'm probably not as upset as the rest of my teammates about the national championship, you know, is to get that opportunity to come home and play against all my, with my friends and my family watching the game. He's just a delight. I remember when Dan Fouts and I did his first game as a freshman. He's been a starter, underwent knee surgery. He plays a lot bigger than he is. Second down now and nine. That's the better off the play fake, rolling hard to the right. And it is complete for a first down to Cedric Cormier, the senior from Houston. Colorado's starting to do a little bit what Oregon does with their passing game. Buy time by bringing your quarterback out of the pocket and then run the deep comeback. When you're facing bump and run, you can't just run fade routes. You have to give them something else, and that deep comeback off of play action is very effective against that bump and run. That's McCoy, number 80, turning back on the motion. To Graham, the tight end. Graham muscles his way to the 26-yard line and another Buffalo first down. Moretti makes the stop. Daniel Graham is bracketing him inside with the linebacker, a safety deep. You throw the ball, you'll see him triangled. Three guys coming in on him every time. If his release is across the formation, the linebacker will take him. If it's deep, the safety will take him outside the strong safety. Good game plan again from Oregon. Pesavento to take off. Very close to the line. End of the end zone for a touchdown goes McCoy. They're calling him over. And they the line. believe he was over the line when he threw it coming back. The referee made the call. The referee was a guy who ran up there and made the call. That's not usually the player, the, the uh, official that makes the call in that situation. Now the line was the 26. And as you look across at the down marker, it actually looks between the 26 and the 27. Passer was across nope. the line of scrimmage when he threw the pass. Five-yard penalty plus loss and down. Second down. Let's take one look at it and see where he lets this ball go. Comes up in the pocket. Comes. Oh boy, I don't know. Oh, wow. I think that's a bad call. I think actually the referee, the official, out of position made the call, and that's why he blew it. Johnson is eating up, but we have Dave Perry, the head of Big Ten officials, with us up here in the booth. And Dave, I know that you just had a chance to look at that replay one time. What's your feeling about the call and the man who made the ruling? Well, normally, a uh, referee would not make that call. Normally, to be a line of scrimmage official. Extremely close. Going to have to look at it some more. I'm sure they will in the tape review. Looked to me like his ball, the ball was out of his hand before he got past the line of scrimmage. But I think the wrong official made the call. Trailing the play like that, it is so hard for him to make that decision when he's not looking down the line. That's what you hate to see. 
incomplete overthrew McCoy that time. Played at Scottsdale Community College before going up to Boulder. No good. Also beginning to set on Colorado. A very bad break just moments ago for the Buffaloes, who appeared to many to have scored. Joy Harrington on a great play fake. He's got the fullback running free for another first down. And that's Josh Line, the senior from Springfield, Oregon. 16 more yards for Joey Harrington, who has now thrown for almost 300. Just another different play from Oregon. You can never settle on exactly what they're going to do. First down, they're going to throw deep. First down, they're going to run the counter. First down, they're going to run the bootleg. Oregon, uh, Colorado, excuse me, needs to man up and come after Harrington. It's their only chance in this game, and they're off 10 yards again. Parker's in the slot. Got him again, and he is hit just as soon as he touches the ball by Michael Lewis, the safety. This is a very special weekend for Josh Line. You see, he and his wife, Tiffany, were supposed to be welcoming their first child into the world sometime after this game. But their young daughter was Griff, their young son, Griffin, was born five weeks premature. But I'm pleased to say that Griffin and Tiffany have made the trip to the Fiesta Bowl, wowing all of the doctors, and they said they wanted to see Dad play his last game. Well, that was a great moment because they saw Pop handle the ball for the first time. That pump fake again by Harrington going deep once that home run. Parker's held up. He is overthrown as he collided with Strickland. I get the feeling now, Brent, that Joey Harrington feels like he's playing with house money. He's got this big lead. He wants to go deep with the ball. He wants to get one more there. He had a couple short throws right there. The patience that he had in the first half, now he's starting to look deep a little bit too much. 28-7, here's third and eight. Buffaloes need the ball. Buffalo blitz. Harrington given all kinds of time. Colorado read the screen. No first down. They dropped off, and Smith couldn't pick up the necessary yardage. And Oregon forced his special teams. Betrayed him the last time he took on Colorado in a bowl game. That over in Hawaii with Ben Kennett on the opening kickoff back for a touchdown. Hollowell makes the fair catch inside the 15. Yard line. So Harrington and the Ducks lead it by 21 at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Timeout. Head coach Mike Bellotti told us he was very flattered by the interest shown in Notre Dame. He has a couple of youngsters in high school back in Eugene. He's very comfortable with the lifestyle there. But ladies and gentlemen, that man someday will wind up in the National Football League. This is an outstanding coach. Pesavino and his top. On a slick throw for a first down, Daniel Graham, the senior tight end, Mackey Award winner from Denver. Well, because David Moretti that time was right on Dan, uh, Graham that time. That had to be a slick throw because it was perfect. The two quarterbacks, obviously, Harrington controlling this football game. He's got more weapons. He's got a better offense. Pesavento needs the running game to complement him. Purify the running back. It makes him more one-dimensional. We've got to play catch up. Pesavento firing underneath. And I believe he's close to another first down. Is that a face mask? The late flag comes flying in. And a five yard face mask and it goes to the end of the run, making a first down. Oregon comes right at him with the blitz. Pesavento stands there, delivers another on target pass. Webster comes across, yanks him down, and uh, that could have gone either way. That could have been a 15 yarder just as easily as a five yarder there as he turned him down. Actually, his hand came loose, and that's why he only got the five yards. Pesavino hit, and he was not expecting Bowman to be coming. Hard off the corner, Rashad Bowman. Part of your job as a quarterback to check this guy out. That's your job. You saw Joey Harrington do it. This time, Pesavino doesn't go through his reads, and he pays the price. He's lucky he didn't fumble. Second down and 16. The run. And the daylight goes purified. Battling close to a first down. A powerful run with Lewis. Making this stop for the Ducks. Be purified. 900 plus yards rushing this year for Colorado. Chris Brown, Portland Johnson. They have not been able to get these guys free in the secondary like this as they've been regularly doing in the second half of the year. No, oh, two third and ones they did not make in the first half. That has really kept them from controlling the ball. Oregon outrushing Colorado. Big toss, they're gonna throw on third down. Right over, they got Graham, he juggles it. 
incomplete. Oh, man. Wide open. Granaz here runs right by the safety. Keith Lewis falls perfectly thrown, and he just drops it. So Colorado 0 of 3 now on third and from the lead man. Here it comes. Oregon made him battle for it. It'll depend on the spot. He makes it. Here we go. Half Stretch a it out. Down. Half a foot. Yep. Maybe even less than that. Whew. The fake draw. Middle. Long. Incomplete. And a great reach at the end as Bowman had the coverage on Brunson. Guts to go man to man with your corners on wide receivers in college football. You can crowd that line of scrimmage. Bowman stride for stride. He thinks he's going to intercept it. Actually, Brunson knocks it away from him right at the end of the play. Purified. Who's rushed for 24 yards. The running back here on second down. Go, go, go. And he's hit on the handoff. Red perfectly by Kevin Mitchell, the sophomore from Orange, California. It was a finesse play, Brent. It was going to be a reverse. They were trying to bait him to come inside this way. At the end of the play, he just doesn't read it. He goes for the running back. Mitchell just makes the tackle before the reverse guy right here can get the ball. Mitchell's been all over the football field. He's also stepping in as the long snapper on punts today because the regular long snapper came up with an injury. He has never been the long snapper on punts before, but he's a good athlete doing the job. Here's Pesamento. Drew Time goes to coverage, and it's intercepted Smith's second of the game. Smith with his second interception of the game. The senior from Rancho Palos Verdes picks off Pesamento again. Really don't know what Colorado was trying to do here. Two-man route, third and very long. The safety's back in the middle of the field. When you only have two guys out and you have a safety standing there, four guys covering two, you're most of the time going to get this ball picked off. Both interceptions are very costly. Both came on third down. Timeout. Special Shane. Hi, Mom. This is Stephen, my fiance. How you doing, man? <laughs> Happy New Year, Mom. And this tailgate party at USO Camp Casey, Korea, is brought to you by Tostitos. And what a beautiful view as the sun sets on the desert here in Arizona. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, Oregon, and Joey Harrington leading Colorado 28-7. The story has been the Duck defense. They've limited Colorado to 69 rushing yards. Got him in a passing mode with that score. Now they've been held to 208 yards of offense. And Harrington back on the field goes to work on the clock now with Smith. The ball carrier on first down. The very epitome of never give up. But things not going his way today. Harrington snaps it off to Howery again. Howery is surrounded at the 25-yard line. And Michael Lewis making another show. He's one of the favorites all along for the Pac-10. Their only loss this year at the hands of Stanford. As Harrington on a quick pop over the middle of the tight end. And he is out to the 38-yard line for a first down. Justin Peel, the senior from Dublin, California. Love the way Harrington delivers this ball. He just doesn't lay it out there. He rockets this ball. He knows he's got a hot. As he backs out, he just gives it to his tight end. Another first down. Doesn't throw it off balance. Fires it right at those numbers. Harrington receives more punishment when he plays the piano than he has today against this well, defense. They're, blitzing. they're just one step ahead. Blitz him, hot. You got to cover him. You got to move up and cover him. Colorado's playing 10 yards off. First down. Here's the toss now. Smith runs for the corner, and there is Lewis. He has been a standout, even though Colorado trails at 28. Seconds. Have dominated both sides of the line of scrimmage here today. They can bring the end around. Lewis to the 45 yard line. And it'll be third down and about, oh, make it three or four now coming up. Nice block by Ontario Smith. Just outside of your picture here is going to come out and get the last man on the line of scrimmage. Does a nice job here getting Massini right there. Number two, oh, boom, perfect. That springs it for the yardage. Positive yards instead of negative yards. Well coached, doing his job. 
a good player being intended to Colorado Buffalo down Gary as we think about the uh, the game itself and the entire game what surprises you the most we had expected a high scoring game with the both teams trading punches and the Colorado has been unable to score for Barnett well there's no doubt I mean Colorado thought they could mash them. they felt that they could knock them off the ball they knew they didn't have a great passing game they knew their own corners might not be able to stand up they thought they could control the clock and take the pressure off their quarterback that's been the story of the game they can't run the ball against this Oregon Duck defense Aliotti, the defensive coordinator and he was very open very open about the game plan. In fact, he could have called Barnett and told him, because he told everybody else. He said, we're going to man the corners about 75% of the time. We're going to put eight and nine, and then we're going to maintain those gaps. We don't want the cutback runs that yep, Colorado absolutely. had against Nebraska and Texas. We're going to change the front from time to time. It was a very open game plan. Nothing secretive. Here's Harrington. He's got another one for a first down at midfield. Joey Harrington put it into the hands of Parker. Look at this space. You've got to crowd the line of scrimmage. It's third and five. You can't give him that easy throw. He'll pick you apart all day like he has. We've come to the end of the third. Oregon, one quarter away for arguing for at least half a national championship. You never know what my partner, Gary Daniels, was going <laughs> to kind of come up with during those commercials. He said, Brent, Harrington might be so good. The Texans will have to take uh, you. <laughs> Houston Texans, right? They, I, I, it's hard to pass this guy up. He's in complete control. He's got a wonderful offense and a defense that really can't match up. Yeah, you were really impressed. I haven't seen you this impressed with a quarterback all season long. Command of the game, knowing what he wants to do, and having the ability to wait and wait and take the big play when it gets there. That's the key. He's thrown for 311 yards, three touchdowns, facing a first and ten as we start the fourth quarter. And breaking free again this time, it is Smith. Earlier, it was Morris for 49 yards on that play in which he rolled over a prone defender and then dashed the rest of the way for the touchdown in the third quarter. Brent, when you talk to your friends, the, those, those odds makers my friends, and stuff, yes, okay? They are my friends. What were the odds that Oregon would outrush Colorado in this football game? Did you get that <laughs> one? Off the board, my friends. <laughs> you know, there's some things I don't even bother to ask for because I think it's ridiculous, you know, but here it is. I mean, 127 to 69, Oregon has outrushed them and leads it 28 to 7. Another underdog, though, coming through for us, Gary. The Buffaloes were favored. Give it a Harrington miss. pumps it into nothing but wide open space. Willis, who has been one of his big receivers here today. Joey Harrington's wondering why people in the Pac-10 don't run this off this defense all the time. A 10-yard cushion. They're going to run it again. They're going to run the smash route. He goes out five yards. He stops. He allows the deep guy to just hook there and just take an easy pitch and catch. Harrington says, I didn't know the Big 12 was this easy. I could have won the Heisman if I'd have played in the Big 12. And those humans were right after all. We <laughs> should have been past it here. That's what they're thinking. First down and 10. Ball on the 36. There's a fake from Harrington. Penalty flag. Middles open incomplete. But there is a penalty flag at the 35-yard line. Check in with Jack Aru, Jack. Brent, Gary, do you remember when we met with the Oregon coaches and specifically with Jeff Tedford when he told us the most important tape that this team reviewed all, all in preparation for this game was that Big 12 championship? They saw some of the chicanery that Vince Okru tried to play against Texas. And Jeff said, told us, he said, hey, we're not surprised. We know what we're expecting. Yeah, exactly. And Jeff Tedford, whom you saw there, is headed to Berkeley in the University of California. Sort of interesting because one of the stories we pursued early on with Bellotti is why did you keep Tedford here and not turn him loose? You know, if you talk to Bobby Bowden, he probably wishes a year ago that Mark Rick had gone early to Georgia after he was hired. But Bellotti said we talked it over. Jeff said he wanted to stay with the youngsters who he had helped bring in to Eugene. He hired his assistant coaches early on. We thought he had Berkeley well taken care of. So certainly we welcomed him. And then he'll name a new offensive coordinator sometime or probably next week as Smith powers his way to the 35-yard line. Guess who has the most completions, most completed passers ever in a Tostita 
Fiesta Bowl. Now, I know you don't know, but it's a good friend of yours, Gary. So I know you're going to be able to guess it for huh. me. 1985. Bernie Kosar. There you are, yeah, Miami absolutely. against UCLA. I knew you'd get it. He had to play in the game against Boston College and then come right out here. Came right here. Right? Remember that? Oh, yeah. They played in that game. So 31 is the number, and Harrington's sitting on a 25 right now with 13 minutes to go. He said, all right, Mr. Kosar, one closer at the 30-yard line with that completion to Jason Willis again. So we, uh, we've we talked about Dan Fouts and Monday night. He'll be there for the season finale of Monday Night Football along with Al and Dennis. And you'll see the Vikings and the Ravens. Now, if I have this correct, the Vikings are long gone. And yes, the Ravens haven't gone. wrapped up a playoff post. Right? Do I have it right? The first half, I know you do. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Third down, I asked George Hill who will be joining the uh, the Monday night crew. He shakes his head affirmative that that's the way it is. So uh, if the Ravens can shut down Randy Moss, Here's wrap Keel. that up. He catches way. him on third down, the tight end. Yeah, he sure does. Harrington pump fake, look back. Head and cover, he's going to go for the end zone. Going to go for one more over to his receiver. And Strickland out of bounds. Made the catch out of bounds. So fourth down coming up for the Ducks here with 12 minutes to go. Why well, they keep coming at you, don't they? Mm. And number three jersey, as you've been pointing out, Brent. I mean, that's as clean as a kicker's jersey after the game. Absolutely. I mean, just take a look at number three. You put it down right. That's as dirty as he's been all day. He can put, put the one in, knee down he can for frame it right after this game. He can just put it in a frame. 47 yarder slips it through just like that so his long 46 he's got a new one at 47 and it's 31 7 another sellout crowd here at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl 74,118 and 16 the last 17 Tostitos Fiesta Bowl games have been complete sellouts. One of the great settings during the bowl season. And this, of course, hosting the BCS game. Next year, the championship game of the BCS will be played. Colorado being upset 31 to 7. Hollowell being sealed in the corner. Coming out from the 10. Looking daylight slips him down at the 20 yard line. What a job this defensive unit of Oregon has done. Uh, against Colorado and Craig Oaks checks in at quarterback. The sophomore from Boulder replaces Pesaveno. They drop him back in the shotgun. High intercepted on his first pass, and he's done it again. Steve Smith, three interceptions on the day. He will be the defensive player of the game as he picks off Craig Oaks throwing his first pass of the game and Harrington and the Ducks are in business again crossing route Oaks probably fired up got a lot of juice in that arm wants to show things as he throws the ball he just throws it too high just tipped and there's the freebie there's the freebie right there Smith gets his third one and that was just a ball poorly thrown and Colorado pays the price so now Morris inside the 25 yard. I remember now both Morris and Smith have scored touchdowns. Morris rushing and he's gained 88 yards on the ground. He's the leading rusher. But Smith took that shovel pass yeah. from Joy Harrington. One of the three touchdown passes that Harrington has thrown here today in this game. So coming down toward the 11 20 mark leading at 31 7 with a second down and nine. I keep throwing the ball. I put points on the board, points on the board. I want everybody to see how many we scored against Colorado if I'm over. Throw it. And here comes Harrington moving hard left. Fires back complete. It'll be first and goal at the five-yard line. And it took five black shirts to bring Justin Peel down that time. And Oregon going to make a statement now. 19 more yards, and this is a team that wanted to be in Pasadena. What a system. Half roll, throwback. Get the linebackers moving and gun it. You see he doesn't lay it up. He just guns it right there. Big body in front of a small body. What a nice system. What a magnificent quarterback Joey Harrington is. They close the deal here, and they'll be cheering hard for Nebraska. 
Because rest assured, the media will annoy Oregon, the winner of the Associated Press Bowl, with what they're doing here today. Colorado was seven points. Remember, they scored 62 on Nebraska. Peel goes back to that fullback spot, and they'll run and Morris. Four-yard line that time. A nice tackle by Dabney. Gonna throw. Harrington in trouble. Outrunning Johnson. Fires. Touchdown! Justin Peel. The fourth touchdown pass of the game for Joey Harrington. And what a merry tune he's playing here today against Colorado. Same play that Colorado used against Fresno State. Fullback in the black, tight end deep. It's not there, so what does the tight end peel do? Finds a different area, and buying time, Harrington comes back to him and makes the throw. You know who's two, two playing right now? Houston Texans, Houston Texans. <laughs> <laughs> There's the extra point being added. Harrington saluting the crowd during each home game. 50 friends and relatives chartered a bus and drove from Portland. They were there to see Joey Harrington, and are they ever enjoying this? Time out. Joey Harrington has thrown for 350 yards here today. He's 28 of 42, four touchdowns, and one interception way back in the first half. Wrapping up a fabulous career at Oregon. The Offensive Player of the Year this year in the Pac-10. Here is Hollowell. He'll try to light a fire for the Buffalo. The 20. Cuts loose. Tries to find another crease. And makes the most of it to the 31-yard line. Well, Joey Harrington. Also a piano player. And what a tune he's played for us today, huh? Good stuff. Piano teacher once said when he was a youngster, what a great left hand he's got. Well, man, his right hand's not bad here either today. Let me tell you, 920 to go, and Joey Harrington, who saw his likeness on a New York skyscraper to the cost of $250,000, and those backers knew what they were bragging about. This young man is as good as it gets in college football. I think he earned it back. Did he get into a $13 million bowl game? I think that's a good investment. Absolutely. Oaks still in the game. Watch out. What a hit McCoy takes underneath that time. Guess who? Yes, Kevin Mitchell. You bet. He's been all over the field. Great linebackers on this Oregon team. We, You know, we're going to rave about Joy Harrington because he put the offensive numbers up. But, folks, you can't say enough about this defense holding Colorado to only seven points here today. That's a first down. And, of course, we were so impressed because we watched Colorado dominate well, Nebraska and Texas in person. But Colorado didn't have the turnovers in this game like they had against Nebraska. Oh, the gamble doesn't pay off. Here comes McCoy. Oregon got a little greedy that time. And uh, House McCoy, money. exactly. The house money. <laughs> house money. Here comes Oaks. Yeah. Before he can release the football by Mallard. That's not a mistake, folks. The Ducks have outrushed the herd. As far as passing is concerned, no contest. All Joey Harrington for 350. Out of bounds. Graham, the intended receiver. I think there's a penalty flag down. Will root hard. The penalty is declined. Third down. Here will root hard for Nebraska to upset Miami in the Rose Bowl when they play for the BCS championship. Then they can hope the media would crown them at least co-national champions along with Nebraska. And Oregon has made a strong, powerful statement so far here today. 
But nothing has figured in college football this year. It has been a wacky, wacky season. Oaks is in trouble, and he's going down. After the play After was over, unsportsmanlike like conduct against the defense, a 15-yard penalty will bring up fourth down. After the snack, by uh, after the sack by Lewis, there as he pranced out after the sack. Officials obviously thought Mark Gastineau was back on the field. Fourth down, and Ford whistles it before the snap. Well, we talked about what both teams had to do, and I think have it, keep it turned out to be the biggest. When you have the ball, you got to keep it against a good offensive football team. Three turnovers from Colorado. Stay balanced. Okay, but not being able to run it. You know, I was two out of three here. Oh, you were? That, two out of three. That's pretty good. You, you were very good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody who follows college football expected to see Oregon shut down Colorado's rushing game here today. Now it's fourth down and eight, and here's Oaks. There's Graham, first down, jumps over, and he'll be Oaks forced out of bounds win. inside the... 10 yard line where it'll be first down and goal. kicked by his own guy here number 18 watch him bump into it i think it's mitchell that he bumps into and that's what allows graham to get to the outside and graham catches him you know i thought it was two big plays in this game the drop pass by graham and then the call on the touchdown play that was 28 7 when that touchdown maybe it's a football game from 28 14. yeah good point graham the leading receiver for the Buffaloes here today. Fumble on the snap. Oaks dives back on it. Second down and goal. Houston's still a running back, and he didn't help his quarterback out much that time. Five seconds on that play clock. Oaks has to hurry. He's down to two. Didn't get it off. Oaks didn't check the clock. That's going to cost him <laughs> the third down. <laughs> on the 21 yard line. Deep drop, Oaks, going to try to fire it. High incomplete. Okay, you just can't say enough about Aliotti's overall defensive package here today. Well, it has been terrific. You don't win the Big Ten championship, even though this is the second last Pac-10, excuse me, Pac-10 championship without being able to play some pass defense. They could have won is... the Big Ten with this team, too. <laughs> You're right. Goes <laughs> <laughs> down, and Flores, and he kicks the field goal. Now, the Nebraska fans are all over. The other night, I'm walking here in Tempe, and a couple of them are on bicycles, and they're taunting, taunting the Colorado fans. They're pedaling by and saying, hey, you guys wish you were in Pasadena, don't you? Ha, ha, ha. And off they pedal into the night. And here are a couple of others with the old Eric Crouch banner. And, of course, we'll see Eric Crouch in Nebraska Thursday night against favored Miami. This tailgate party at the Ramstein Air Force Base in Germany brought to you by Tostitos. A mug of that German beer and some of those Tostitos scoops taste real good. Along about now, 5.47 to go. Pat Brome and Oregon expecting perhaps an onside kick here at the 5.47. Not to be. For Oregon. It'll be fielded at the 13-yard line by Amundsen. And Amundsen down about the 19-yard line. Now it is time for the fourth tough play of the game. And, folks, here is Morris on this 49-yard touchdown run. Appears to be down about the 22-yard line. He'll roll over a defender. His knees will not touch the ground. He dashes in. And, folks, the 49 yards right now equals the entire rushing output for Colorado after the sacks are taken off. That's right, officially, Colorado has been held to 49 yards, and that's what Morris had on the Ford Tough play of the game. Well, I've heard people predict that Colorado was going to score 50. They didn't even rush for 50 in this game. Smith, the runner this time, and he makes it to the 32-yard line, and Flewellen, fine, yeah, he can stop. Let's check in with Jack Aru. Jack? Well, guys, Joey Harrington is not the first Harrington to play quarterback at Oregon. They still toss the ball around now and again. It was Joey's dad, John, the quarterback the Ducks back in the 60s. And if it's anything the way my father talks, he'll probably insist that Joey is a cheap imitation. Yeah, and on the day he was born, Jack, a letter of intent arrived for John. <laughs>
And so Joey had that in his crib. It was a duck from the day he was born. And uh, grew up in Portland, Oregon. Just as fine a young man as you'd ever want to be around. 4.47 to go now. And Joey Harrington and the Ducks making an argument for at least the Associated Press crown as Lyon runs it straight ahead to the 36-yard line. Bellotti and the Ducks now working on the clock, trying to bring it down as quickly as they can. Well, should Nebraska knock off Miami? I, I think a split title would be fair. I think it would be fair. I think Oregon, Oregon taking half of it, Nebraska taking half of it, I think that'd be fair for everyone. No quarrel here. It's a good-looking football team. Yes, Dan it is. And yes, it is. You know, Mr. Ba Mr. Jackson fellow who's going to be doing the Rose Bowl, he keeps us out of that time zone, you yes. know? So <laughs> this is a pleasure for us to see Joy Harrington of the Ducks here. First down and 10, 4-16. Yeah, Tim Brandt and Keith Jackson will be bringing you the uh, Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. Well, Colorado enjoyed a great run, capturing the Big 12, beating up on Nebraska, up in Boulder, Colorado. As far as Oregon is concerned, they have lost only once. So Oregon's only loss this year came at the hands of Stanford, and two punts were blocked by Stanford in that game. And it brings up a story that we're going to relate as, you sh as we show you that videotape. And this is whistle before the snap. The up back for Oregon was a backup quarterback, number 10. And on the first one, he doesn't get his man. But Pilati is told that a guard missed the block. So they leave the young man in. And the quarterback gets overpowered again. And Stanford blocks the second punt. So after that, the special teams coach, Robin Ross, changed the up back and he has done an outstanding job here today because Bellotti was really concerned about his special teams coming into this game so it's just amazing when you go back in sport and, and plays happen for Colorado they have always the little it's things always the little right. things that go on yep. that you learn about later second down and 13 now and, uh, and Joey Harrington, whenever you walk up and interview him and talk to him, it's the smile that captivates you. And I said, Joey, how come you're so optimistic? What's that all about? I honestly I just have fun. You know, when you start getting real negative and you start getting down on yourself, that's when the game's not fun anymore. I play the game because I enjoy it, because I enjoy the interaction with my teammates, and I, I love being out there in front of all the people. It's just a fun game to play. It's infectious, folks. Yep. Modest, great arm, understands the offense, team player, great leader, come back in the fourth quarter. I, you know, I, I hate to say it. I mean, this is the type of guy you build a franchise around in the National Football League. Exactly. And, uh, Gary, if we go back now, and this will be the fourth year for the BCS championship to be played. The first one was here. That was back in 99. Tennessee of the SEC. Then it was Florida State of the ACC. And a year ago, of course, in the Orange Bowl, the FedEx Orange Bowl, Oklahoma of the Big 12. Now, Nebraska, of course, could come along. Or if Miami takes care of business and they're favored, then the Big East, it'll be four different conferences in four years with BCS championships. And Ontario Smith, you know, here's a young man you got to feel good for, too. Smith had a little problem with marijuana down in Tennessee and uh, transferred up here to Oregon. And he's made himself into a solid citizen up there. And you got to be happy for the young man, as you are for all of the players here on the Oregon Ducks here uh, this evening. They've lost only one game, and they're going to make a statement. And should Nebraska win, you can look for the Associated Press media folks to vote Oregon number one, because remember, the AP had them number two behind Miami. It's the computers that like Nebraska a little bit better. Doing everything right. Hollowell driven back to the 15-yard line. Almost like a little decoy. And he is down at about the 18-yard line off the Arroyo punt. And that was Mallard downfield making these. Bob Goodrich is working along our fine director, Larry Camp. It is complete. Just short of that 40 yard line. The technical director, Monty Holy. Our production assistants, Kurt Thomas and Tim McDermott. The computer stats man, Anthony Holman, as Oaks throws low this time. I'm sure the crowd from Oregon starting to chant, We're number one. We're number one. Short drop by Oaks. 
and completed the 42-yard line. Stage for the Nokia Sugar and the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T on <laughs> Thursday night, and then don't forget the quarterback. And now some of the young defensive players who played a whale of a game being brought off the field to a huge ovation here in Tempe as Oaks has got Graham again one yard line inside of two minutes and doesn't take long does it folks it doesn't take long for the t-shirts to come out take a little chance before the game you print them up you make money after that's capitalism <laughs> isn't it it is it doesn't work you got to eat them yes. I was out there walking a few blocks with Willie, a ticket broker from Denver. I said, how's business? He said, well, it was good early. It was kind of slow this afternoon. I said, well, give it time, but just before the kickoff. Oaks fires deep and out of bounds. You want to know where Joey Harrington's going to be Thursday, Brent? No, not in front of a TV watching ABC's coverage of the AT&T Rose Bowl. He and his family have decided to attend the Rose Bowl. I'll guarantee you that he will be one duck rooting for the Cornhuskers. And we'll have to tell uh, Mark Loomis and uh, Patrick McManus of our crew to find him. He'd be a pretty good cutaway over there for Keith. Yeah, that's going to be a very interesting ball game. Second down. Hollowell, the motion receiver. And Oaks is going down. You know, the one thing about the BC is, folks, Gary and I have figured out a way just to shorten it. Just find the champion of the state of Florida and then pick the best Every team to year. take him Every on. Year that's They've been there. Oaks very rusty to me. He, he just looks like he's just not used to playing. Obviously. That's Houston, the receiver. The running back at the 30. And that's a first down, stopping the clock at 113. Now, I, I think the Oregon coaches incomplete. If I had to give a special game ball, obviously, you've got Joey Harrington, Smith with his three interceptions. But I'd give a special game ball to the coaching staff at Oregon. I think this is about as well prepared as I've ever seen a team meeting a team that is on an enormous high. I think Bellotti and his entire coaching staff really had the answers. I mean, they really shut that offensive line down here today with that gap control defense of Aliotis. And Colorado was never able to respond. They didn't counter back off that. So coaching is so huge in any level of football. That's why these guys demand millions of dollars. Second down and 10. Underneath on the pass, the 18-yard line, that's Cormier. Well, you look back at the Nebraska game, and of course, Nebraska's not built that way. They don't throw the ball deep on him. And McCoy almost free to the five yards. But here today, Joy Harrington, they didn't rattle him. Their change-ups didn't fool him, and he was right on the money, except for one high bad throw, incomplete at the goal line. Got a man. Touchdown, and it was easy. A mistake on Graham, and he was running free. Yeah, that's 15 yards. Absolutely, Daniel Graham. You're getting beat 38 to 16, and you're going to dunk the ball. His last game as an amateur. Missed no good. Extra distance cost him a point. Pull back out in the flat. Daniel Graham goes deep to the back of the end zone. Wide open. Oaks delivers it perfectly. And give it a little bit of a dunk shot at the end of it. And, uh, well, he got 15 yards. Gets up in the air pretty good, though. <laughs> Wish we would have got up in the air and caught that one earlier in the game. Yeah, held on. Remember that? He yes, he actually I do. Had the yes, ball. I do remember that one. Also remember that he missed Kirkby, too. There's a there's a nice moment. Harrington and Bowman down there. Close by Jackaroot. This is the dropped ball by the Mackey Award winner. He's got away from him. No excuses. In fact, there are no excuses in this game. This no. was Oregon's football game from beginning to end. They put 497 yards of offense up there. We think of Joey Harrington. He has now thrown 10 touchdown passes on this field in his last two games. Remember, he got a half dozen a season ago against Arizona State. You know, so he loves playing here. Almost 800 yards. Maybe the Cardinals should take him. Oh, they got Jake. Oh, that's right. Here's the onside kick, and it'll be downed. 
17 seconds to go. Well, let the backup quarterback go in there and take the knee. Well, we mentioned that the Oregon line at the top of our broadcast had given up only 11 sacks all season long. Today, they gave up zero Zip. sacks, as in zero. And I can only remember pressure once when I thought it was meaningful pressure. And I think that's way back in the first quarter. So here's uh, yeah, five hammer off the line. There's a penalty flag down. Five yards, face mask penalty. Attacked on the end of the run. The second down. And here comes the end of the game right now. Oregon wins the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. 38 to 16, and down we go now to Jack Aru. Jack Harrington, congratulations. You are the king of the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Now, what sort of a statement does this make for the national championship? That's not up to me. It's up to everybody watching the game. We played our hearts out today. We played against the hottest team in the country. Just take a look. Just take a look. Now, you're going to be rooting for Nebraska? You better believe I'm going to be rooting for Nebraska. I'm going to be sitting with friends and my family and watching that game closer than anybody else. Congratulations. Thank you very much. There we have it. Joey Harrington and the Oregon Ducks with a huge win. Again, the final score, 38-16. Oregon wins it. <laughs>